Mr. Energetics for our angelic discussions. Um, I'd just like to invite you all, just drop in your heart space so that we can all connect in this, uh, this divine sweet energy of our heart. That's why we are here, really connect through the heart and through uh, to each other's heart and to the angelic frequencies in the space of love. So you can just uh, gently close your eyes <clears throat> just feel the, the swirling, this energy of love and light just radiating out of your own heart and just connecting to each other in this room and with us and with your own angels and guides. Eloha <laughs> ki Ekasana kala mara kai alaka, ikishini kiala, ekala mara ki, ekashana kala mara ki shini ki, ikala mara kai alaka, ula ki shini ki, ushanta ikishani ki, ashanti la akala mara ki. What is light language, and, and when you're channeling it, what's the experience that can you share that with everybody? Um, it is an energetic field. I can be dropping, and I connect to the the frequencies of the angels, and also the stars, and also guardians, and also the earth. So it also collective energy field that we, we, we co all co-create. So I uh, connect to the vibrations of the each, or each person's heart so that we can be more open and we can be more open to your own soul essence. So it's an, <laughs> it's an energetic um, the transmission of your, I could say the soul vibration and the earth vibrations and um, the angelic vibrations and the star vibrations, and um, you don't—it's—it's it's something that you don't have to understand with your mind because it opens your heart energy, opens your energetic body to the highest frequencies that where you can hold this uh, divine, um, divine energetic field within, and also it will help you to remember who you really are because we are really the divine sparks 
of the source and the God and the goddess. So yes, and it depends where I am and the, what the theme is and you know the lo locality. When I go to South America, the the transmission is different. It encompasses with the native, the energetic field, and also it can be very healing and also it can be very activating. Um, so that's how I can explain. So thank you. Thank you very much, Yunjong. Keith, would you like to start us off and have a little chat? About yeah. what, what you do, and maybe Actually, take some questions if they're for you. Um, I'm getting a pretty good sense <coughs> that there might be some people hiding in here. And what I mean, <laughs> what I mean by that is hiding from who you really are. Which you know, it might even sound cliche these days to talk about who we really are. But um, I don't think that's a question that will ever get fully answered in this lifetime, because um, there's so much to explore about who we are. And um, what I mean about hiding is I feel like, um, I don't know, I used to hide a lot. I, I was probably one of, uh, an expert at hiding um, before um, Archangel Michael found me. And um, in a really profound way, um, I can speak light of it, but one of the main things that I have um, since I've come out as a, um, one of those airy fairy type people, that I used to make fun of when I was younger. Um, who would have thought that all these years later I'd be uh, communing with angels and speaking about God? It was definitely not on my radar 15 years ago. Um, but that's because I was hiding. I was hiding from my life purpose. I was hiding because I was hiding behind a whole bunch of wounds that were keeping me kind of imprisoned. Um, and I was going on a real slow path downhill. I feel like everybody in here is probably doing pretty good, though, um, if you're at this, but you never know. Um, I still feel like some people might be hiding. And so part of the job, I think, today, at least I feel, is to help inspire, inspire and motivate, and to experience what I've experienced through um, the angelic realm, which they, you know, I mean, what a fantastic, amazing, concept, idea, and experience to have beings of light, to have God show up as beings of light that are always around us. They're always around us. And, you know, a lot of people get um, taught out of it. Um, and so, but to what degree, to what degree um, do we get talked out of it or second guess our intuition or the guidance that's coming through? Or maybe on a milder end, just not really leap into living the things that bring you happiness. I'm a firm, absolute, not only believer, um, although again, if you'd asked me 20, 15, 20 years ago, I would have not been a firm believer, um, that there's an energy of your purpose, which usually hangs out up here in your eighth chakra, and there's an energy of your passion that hangs out in your heart. The things that in this life are just going to really make you so overjoyed and when those two combust together and you feel your purpose and your passions it, it there's a flourishing that takes place and things that you didn't even know bring you joy and happiness reveal themselves to you that was one of the concepts that kind of blew my mind like there are things that i love and absolutely I'm overjoyed about that I don't even know what they are. And so to be able to start digging around and exploring that um, is, uh, is, uh, is amazing. And, um, and so uh, one of the things that happened to me was I experienced my very first immaculate healing. Um, and when I call something an immaculate healing, what I mean by that is um, complete transformation. You know, uh, I guess the simplest explanation I could give is if, if you had a fear of heights and you couldn't go on balconies and you couldn't go up in elevators and couldn't hike mountains, but maybe you had a longing to be in the mountains and hike, um, and then all of a sudden in one split second you were able to go hang gliding and jump out of airplanes and, you know, hang off at the edge of a balcony, that to me would be what I would call an immaculate healing, it, it just a real split second transformation. And I had that. I've had um, quite a few. And the blessing and the curse of that is that um, the blessing is it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely, I don't know, has anybody ever experienced that type of a healing? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's what I would call, it comes in the realm of the miraculous. And that's what our 
angels and guides, they, they're, they live there. They're there 24-7 um, eternally. Um, and they help us with that. Um, and so again, as a total, I'm a, I still have a good amount of skepticism, but um, not nearly what I used to. And um, they, Archangel Michael, he is uh, my main angel, um, has been teaching me a lot um, about immaculate healing. And so the, the blessing was, it's amazing. I mean, to go from being completely inhibited with panic attacks and um, freaking out um, because I was so clairsentient that I was picking up on everybody else's energy, to being liberated and free and exploring my life, to go from high blood pressure and being about 15 pounds heavier and smoking and drinking and eating uh, really bad food, to being um, absolutely reversing everything in my physical body um, is, it's amazing. And then you want everything to be like that. And it's like, I want an immaculate healing for everything. <laughs> and that didn't happen. Um, I found out I had to actually work, but one of the things that they've been guiding me to um, do is cultivate immaculate healing. What do you do to cultivate <coughs> that? And um, so it's been a, a good 12 years of cultivating that and exploring and expansion, and it's been so much fun. It's been a lot of fun, and I, I, I'm sure that, you know, if you're at one of these, if you're at the Conscious Life Expo, then you're, you already have a predisposed um, idea of wanting to have fun. Um, so it's, it's that, being able to cultivate it, and, there, and with prayer, and with meditation, and with communing with your angels, and allowing yourself to have fun, and yet keeping it. Uh, one of my first mentors uh, told me, oh wow, there's no turning back now, now that you've opened this up. And she said, what you want to always remember is you want to take this very seriously and don't take it very seriously. And, um, <laughs> and I totally understand what she means by that because there's a reverence, a reverence that communing and being with your angels and being with God where it's, it's kind of serious, but they're so fun and so playful that it's not that serious. And um, especially our problems, that's the main thing. They can seem so serious, but they're not that serious. Mm -hmm. uh, until, and, but you know, uh, until we get there, they're pretty uh, heavy. So um, that's just a, a little bit of um, what I was feeling is that uh, I feel like there's some people maybe hiding, and I would love to, um, with a lot of the inspiration from these amazing people on the panel here, maybe cultivate um, connecting more with the, your heart's passions mm -hmm. and the things that make your heart sing and your purpose. And uh, take it from me, um, well, you don't have to, but uh, <laughs> from someone who was a total skeptic and didn't know anything about anything, um, until a whirlwind came. Um, it is absolutely a multi-dimensionally magnificent world um, that we are only just beginning. I mean, this is a magnificent time that we're in to be able to cross in and actually have all these experiences and it's only gonna get better.